innocent sleep. Sleep that soothes away all our worries. Sleep that puts each day to rest. Sleep that relieves the weary laborer and heals hurt minds. Sleep, the main course in life's feast and the most nourishing. That's William Shakespeare from his play Macbeth. Even in the year 1606, Shakespeare was already aware that sleep has vital and specific roles to repair both the body and the mind. Aloha, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD from Out of the Doldrums. Today, we're gonna talk about something new. You may have never heard of it before. This thing didn't exist in anatomy textbooks when I went to medical school. It's a brand new discovery. It's the glymphatic system. The what system? It's the glymphatic system. Stands for glial dependent lymphatic transport. What on earth is that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. In short, it's a lymphatic like system for your brain. We all know about the lymphatic system, which is so, so important to a healthy body because it gets rid of toxins, waste, and other unwanted materials in our bodies. The glymphatic system was discovered in 2012, and the name glymphatic system was coined by scientists at the Nadergaard Lab in Rochester, New York. And just like your lymphatic system filters and purifies toxins from the blood, the glymphatic system appears to filter and purify the brain. Since its discovery, we're finding that a functioning glymphatic system is important for healthy aging, especially maintaining cognitive health and memory as we get older. We're also finding that there's certain things we can do to maximize our glymphatic system activity. And there's other things we should avoid at all costs because of how toxic they are to our brain health. Before we get into too much detail though, we've got to talk a little bit about the anatomy. Bear with me, this part should be over pretty quick. The brain consists of four fluid compartments, cerebrospinal fluid or CSF, interstitial fluid, intracellular fluid, and the blood vessels or vasculature. Many people don't know this, but blood is kept separate from the brain tissue itself and the CSF by the blood brain and blood CSF barriers. This is very important and it's crucial to minimizing exposure of brain tissue to all sorts of weird toxins in the blood. The CSF bathes the brain in this fluid and you can see why the CSF has to be pure and perfect when it comes to concentrations of certain ions, etc. The CSF flows alongside the arteries and is forced into spaces next to the smaller blood vessels that enter the brain. There, in this space, it interchanges with interstitial fluid, which is the fluid surrounding the brain cells, forming the glymphatic vasculature. This interchange results in the collection of waste products, such as metabolites and proteins, and their transfer to CSF, which carries them out of the brain to sites where the CSF drains. This system works beautifully, and it's vitally important to the clearing of waste products in our nervous systems. The glymphatic system is found to be most active during sleep, and this could explain why sleep is so important. Compare that to when we're awake. The glymphatic system is pretty much disengaged. One paper even went so far as to say that an awake state is incompatible with glymphatic system activity and they go on to suggest that cleaning of the brain is one of the reasons for the necessity of sleep. Huh, is there anything that can impair the glymphatic system? That's a good question. Here are three things that we know have been found to disrupt glymphatic function. Loss of sleep, aging, and traumatic brain injury, or TBI. Let's go through the mechanisms of some of these. Let's start with loss of sleep. When we sleep, our glymphatic system is the most active. We already talked about that. During this time, the interstitial space increases in volume, which suggests that increased glymphatic activity is made possible by the greater availability of space for the interchange between interstitial and cerebrospinal fluid. We know that the highest glymphatic activity occurs during stage three sleep, or deep sleep, and it's lowest during REM sleep, or dream sleep. We also know that deep sleep is critical for memory, learning, and metabolite clearance. So what really happens during deep sleep that relates to the glymphatic system and clearing toxins from our brains? Well, two things really. First, our CSF is found to vary in flow rates. When we're awake, it pulses at a small amplitude rhythm. When we're asleep though, it has large amplitude oscillations or waves that peak about every 20 seconds. This results in much greater movement of CSF, allowing for more rapid clearance of waste. These slow oscillatory brain waves that we see in deep sleep result in an 80 to 90% increase in glymphatic clearance relative to a waking state. 
This demonstrates the importance of slow wave deep sleep. Second, during deep sleep, there's something called slow oscillatory neuronal activity. This is where large bundles of neurons coordinate their electrical activity and they rhythmically and repetitively depolarize in this complex dance that we know results in important physiological restoration of the brain and blood oxygen. Impaired glymphatic clearance has been linked to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common dementia. Alzheimer's disease typically begins with a disorientation and then progresses to a gradual deterioration of memory, language, and physical independence. In Alzheimer's, amyloid beta and tau proteins build up in the brain, creating plaques and neurofibrillary tangles that lead to brain degradation. The glymphatic system moves tau proteins and amyloid beta aggregates out of the brain. This suggests that the glymphatic system is involved in modulating or possibly even protection against Alzheimer's disease. This is exciting because if we're able to increase glymphatic clearance, we could potentially slow or even reverse neurodegeneration. This is huge. Specifically, in regards to aging, researchers have found that glymphatic activity decreases as we age. As we age, CSF production decreases and CSF pressure decreases. We also see stiffening of the arterial walls, which decreases glymphatic influx. This decrease in glymphatic activity as we age is important because the highest risk factor for neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's is, you guessed it, aging. In regards to traumatic brain injury, or TBI, we see an interesting correlation between brain trauma, decreased lymphatic clearance, and neurodegenerative diseases. Repeated head trauma, as you would see in a contact sport athlete like a boxer or a football player, can lead to progressive neurodegeneration, and it increases the risk of premature dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Up until recently, we didn't really know why this happened. Researchers found that TBI is linked to large scars in the astroglia of the brain and persistent neuroinflammation. Because of this, they found a severe decrease in glymphatic function. So by now, it must be really clear that poor glymphatic function, no matter what the cause, is a bad, bad thing. Because this system is so new, scientists are still figuring out the ins and outs of how to improve glymphatic drainage. No suitable drug has been developed to do this. We do have some research, however, on individual lifestyle choices and how they modulate lymphatic activity. In this case, behavioral and lifestyle interventions can be both preventative and curative. So what we want to know is, can you improve your lymphatic system? I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, you can. We do have some research on individual lifestyle choices and how they modulate lymphatic activity. In this case, behavioral and lifestyle interventions can be both preventative and curative. Based on the research we currently have, here are seven ways to improve your glymphatic system. The first one is pretty obvious. Try to get as much high quality deep sleep as possible. Do everything in your power that you possibly can to make this happen. Your brain health and your memory depends on it. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video on tips to improve deep sleep and sleep hygiene. Number two, ensure you are getting enough omega-3s. Omega-3s have been found to modulate lymphatic activity. This fits with some of the epidemiological studies that associate increased levels of omega-3 fatty acids with lower incidence of neurodegenerative diseases. Other studies seem to suggest that omega-3 supplementation could delay or even prevent the onset of Alzheimer's disease. Omega-3 fatty acids have potent anti-inflammatory properties, and they seem to promote beta amyloid clearance. Dietary intake of omega-3 fatty acids improved cognitive decline in mild Alzheimer's disease, and supplementation seems to result in increased lymphatic clearance. I know somebody's gonna ask about whether it matters if you supplement versus getting omega-3s from dietary sources like walnuts, hemp, chia, or fish. Their studies showing either way seems to be okay. Number three, intermittent fasting. There've been a few studies that show that intermittent day fasting, meaning fasting on day one while eating on the next day, lowered the amount of beta amyloid in the brain. Scientists think this is because when you fast, a compound called beta hydroxybutyrate is produced. And this compound crosses the blood brain barrier and indirectly exerts a protective effect when it comes to Alzheimer's disease progression. Number four, paying attention to your sleeping position. Gravity affects the movement of blood and CSF through the brain. 
Therefore, sleep position has been postulated to play a role in the clearance of waste products from the brain. An important factor in this clearance pathway is the stretch of nerves and veins in each position. This study was done on mice, but it will hopefully be reproduced in humans soon. It's titled, The Effect of Body Posture on Brain Glymphatic Transport. Glymphatic transport seems to be most efficient in the right lateral sleeping position, followed by the left lateral sleeping position, with more CSF clearance occurring in those positions compared to lying supine or prone. So maybe being a side sleeper is a good thing then. Number five, alcohol consumption. There is no question that chronic alcoholism affects the brain in a bad way. People who use alcohol chronically have been shown to have a decrease in their brain size by at least 10%. Ugh. When it comes to the glymphatic system though, studies show that alcohol can either boost or hinder glymphatic clearance, depending on the dosage and whether the consumption is chronic or acute. This is a study done in 2018 looking at alcohol intake and glymphatic function. It found that acute exposure to low amounts of alcohol boosted glymphatic function. It also found that chronic low-dose alcohol intake boosted glymphatic function, but chronic medium-dose inhibited glymphatic function. The good news though is after 24 hours of sobriety, glymphatic function is fully restored. You might be asking what the dose references are in regards to low and medium alcohol intake. Low dose was defined as 0.5 grams of alcohol per kilogram. Medium dose was defined as 1.5 grams of alcohol per kilogram of body weight. So in a 70 kilogram human, low intake would be about 35 grams, which would be roughly about two standard drinks. A high dose would be 105 milligrams, which would be about seven drinks. So at the end of the day, what does all this mean? Good question. For brain health, it's best to minimize or eliminate alcohol intake altogether. Number six, exercise. Glymphatic flow is accelerated by physical training and improves both memory and cognition in neurodegenerative diseases. One study showed that voluntary running over a six week period reduced inflammation in the brain and reduced the deposition of amyloid beta plaques in the brain, mainly through an increase in glymphatic clearance. This is huge. Exercise can increase glymphatic flow and thereby results in clearing of toxins from your brain. After seeing this research, there's no doubt that exercise has a substantial beneficial effect on brain health and cognition, especially in the elderly. Exercise is one of the most effective neuroprotective lifestyle choices we can make when it comes to healthy brain aging and preventing neurodegeneration. Number seven, avoid chronic stress. Chronic psychological stress is a common risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. This is different from short-term stress. Short-term stress is crucial for adaptation and survival. Compare that to long-term stress, this can be detrimental to both body and mind. Research has shown that chronic stress leads to accumulation of amyloid beta in the brain. And another study demonstrated that mice that were exposed to chronic stress showed decreased lymphatic activity. So there you have it, seven strategies to optimize your glymphatic system and hopefully decrease your risk of neurodegeneration. Pretty simple stuff, but when you put it all together, it makes a huge difference when it comes to improving overall brain health. Let's review them. High quality deep sleep, omega-3 supplementation, intermittent fasting, sleeping on your side, minimize or eliminate alcohol, exercise, avoid or deal appropriately with chronic stress. Well, that wraps it up for today's discussion. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Links to the references used in this video are in the video description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment below with your thoughts on the video and questions you may have regarding the information provided. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and aloha.